Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. When we're not able to do that, we have to find a place to stay. Unfortunately, in most affluent communities where a lot of life gets lost, there is not a shelter for anyone there. Two of the reasons that is is because mayors of towns don't want shelters in their affluent communities. They don't want the impoverished around. Several of the schools in my old neighborhood in an affluent community that served a lot of impoverished children from the lower apartments that have been there for years were literally closed down. I think it's a travesty because if we don't have poverty around wealth, then children don't learn how to earn. They don't learn how to strive. They don't learn differences of culture, differences of family, and differences of social structures. I can remember in my junior high and high school days, I had a friend who sort of lived in a mid-concept of poverty and wealth. Her parents weren't rich, but they weren't poor, but their mentality was somewhat poor compared to that of my educated, college-degreed parents. My mother didn't like the person very much. She really didn't find her very couth, and frankly, I didn't either. It was disgusting to have to eat lunch with her. She had no table manners, and I couldn't believe it. But openly, other people noticed it too and said that to me, and I said, sorry, she's still my friend. I can't do anything about that. I think my other friend started to talk to her about her inability to shut her mouth and keep food in and not be gross. But openly, that's not the point of my story. The point is that children often educate other children about life. My son was not the richest boy in his friends group. He had money from me and it was a sacrifice for me to give him $20-$30 each party time, each weekend time he went off to have time with his friends. It allowed him to not be a burden to those families. Sometimes he would go anyway and the families would pay for him and he didn't think a lot about it. But I do believe that his friends started to time out of his somewhat immaturity of trying to be funny or trying to be smart. And in the beginning, it was clever and cute because he was a foreigner. But after a while, it became a drain for them. Then he got hooked up with the wrong kind of kids who put him on the wrong path and really harmed our family. You see, families of poverty don't teach their children right from wrong. And that is incredibly wrong in God's house. In the life of a man, he has the right to teach his son teach his son how to behave. And I taught my son how to behave a lot. It wasn't easy. It was difficult. I had to do a lot of reading about teenage kids and about <clears throat> people from other families and other cultures and other nations and other ways. Kids with OCD and ADD and all the different specialities that a children's resource group helped us to determine that he was sort of struggling with. But my point in life is that when we love someone, when we care some, for someone, when we deal with someone, we learn to move, we learn to extend grace, and we don't get in their face. What I mean by that is we don't pretend we're doing something for someone and lie, steal, and cheat them out of their life's work. We don't steal their property and pretend we don't have it. We don't throw it away, we don't sell it away, we don't give it away. It's not ours and we didn't earn it at all. There are people in this world that go into storage units and steal them blind. They just start opening units and taking what they want. I'm pretty sure I saw a black family doing that. I did sort of try to report them, but it was interesting that when I stayed downtown Indianapolis, someone took my notebook and took those pages from me. It's like people felt they had the right to stalk and play in my property, even there, even then. It happened all over town, no matter where I went, no matter when I went, no matter what part of town I stayed in, and one of my favorite places to stay at, one of my absolute favorite places to stay at, was in a place called Broad Ripple, because there was a lot of cool people, there was a lot of nice people, and there was some help to be found, some good kids, but usually the kids would eventually turn. And you see, people who are close to poverty don't like the reminder of poverty. It's something I've learned. But people who are truly impoverished often steal from those who are truly in poverty. Isn't that unreal? You'd think they wouldn't do that, but they do do that, and it's a sin. It's a sin to take anything from anyone else's house. It's a sin to steal anything from other anyone else's property. It's an absolute illegal act to do anything like that, and yet people do it every day. One of my favorite chamois shops has lost three of its chairs because they didn't lock it down like 
most of the other companies have already done. That's a foolishness of the company, perhaps, but a stupidity of the children that stole the chairs because there's cameras right there. And how many stupid people do we have to have in the world thinking that this is a cool act, this is a college prank? No, it's not. It's a felony today. And you're illegally and demorally taking something of value from a company. And now people can't enjoy sitting outside, even in the rain. At other places, there are places to sit outside. People in my community love to be outside. They love to be outside. They love to be grilling outside. They love to be cooking outside. They love to be camping outside. They love to be traveling outside. And that's what we did a generation ago. But today, kids are locked in their cell phones. So locked that people go to bed with their spouses and their cell phones right next to their head. And yet then they play the game of, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not participating in this anymore. I've chosen my life. Well, good for you, but did God choose your life? Did God choose your life or did you choose to get out of the life God planned for you because you just couldn't handle the difficult aspect of everybody starts at a certain level and then grows to success in millions. But if you're not willing to give your life to the Lord, then who will you give it to? Did you give it to some man who doesn't really honor you and wants to harm you and he's just been lying to you the whole time? Or did you give it to the one that God chose for you, that loves you till the end of time? 